I'm Lauren Maloney. We break in right now with an update on the Democratic race for U.S. House as the Associated Press is predicting that Becca Ballant will win this primary. These are the numbers we have in right now, 62% to 36%. Our Isabel Shoneman is at Molly Gray's camp, and we have learned that the lieutenant governor has called Becca Ballant to give her congratulations and concede. We just heard from Becca Ballant's wife, Elizabeth Wohl, in Brattleboro, and here is the candidate now, the Democratic imagine, nominee. Uh, here she is, Becca Ballant. At a loss for words, uh, we didn't anticipate uh, quite an early victory this night. We thought it was going to be a long night. So I want to I start off by thanking the other folks who ran with me in this very hard-fought primary. Shanae, Chase Clifford, Lewis Myers, Keisha Ram Hinsdale, and of course Molly Gray. We have all worked so, so very hard, and I know it is not easy to put yourself on the ballot. It's a very vulnerable thing to run for office, and I have so much respect for them for being willing to be a public servant. So please, think of them tonight. It's not easy to lose. It's really not. So look at what we've done tonight. Look at what we've done for the first time, for the first time in history in Vermont. It looks like a woman and a member of the LGBTQ community is probably gonna go to Congress. It's finally our time. It's finally our time. I never, I never thought that this, this would be where I would be in my life. I wanted it so badly that I did not think it would be possible for me to run as an openly gay politician. And I see others in the crowd who are also queer leaders, and I, I thank you so much for stepping up and being out and being proud. So I know Natalie and my wife have talked a lot about all the thanks this is, as you can imagine, not something that is done by, by one person or even a team of people. This is something that is done by thousands of people coming together to give money, to give time, to knock doors in the heat, to sign up for texting shifts, for sending me messages when I was losing hope in my own campaign. Because campaigns, it's not about one day you're up and one day you're down. It's one hour you're up and the next hour you're down. And one hour you feel like you've got Twitter with you and the next hour, Twitter hates you. <laughs> That's what it is to run a campaign. So I wanna thank all of you who have given your time to this effort. And I need to thank my family standing behind me, my, my amazing wife, Elizabeth Wall, and my wonderful kids, Abe and Sarah. I could not do this without their encouragement and their support and all of the sacrifices we have made for years and years for me to have a life in public service. So thank you to my spouse and to all the spouses out there that help elected officials. And of course, to my incomparable manager, Natalie Silver, and the team that she has assembled. And I just, if you are wearing a blue shirt tonight, I want you to come in the middle, come on. If you're wearing a blue shirt and you've been doing that, come on, come on people.
the, the, I have worked nonstop from December, but these people have worked long, hard hours every day, even when I have had to go to bed so I'd have a voice the next day. They were still at the office making calls. They were still door knocking. Thank you so much for all of you've done. Thank you so sincerely. Tonight, together, we all made history, all of us. And it's a culmination of a feeling that I've been chasing since I was young. Growing up gay, you learn really early on what it feels like to feel disconnected, to feel looked down upon, that you're not gonna fit in. And whether you were a person of color in the crowd, whether you're from a marginalized community, whether you come from poverty, you know what that feels like. And we have tried to have this campaign, this campaign be a campaign of inclusion, deep, deep commitment to inclusion, that all will find a place on this campaign. And that is how I want to lead in Congress as well. I often say that I taught public school, I taught middle school, because those were some of the hardest years of my life. And I wanted to go into public service to represent those students that I had in Congress and in the legislature and make it possible for them to feel supported and included. And now, after two, day, excuse me, two decades in public service, I carry their stories with me in the work that I do in the legislature and hopefully the work that I will do in Congress. It's work that we did to increase the minimum wage here in Vermont. To invest in childcare, to invest in housing, and to finally enact some common sense gun laws here in Vermont. Because for our kids, for me and for my family, for so many of us, politics is not a game. It's not a game and it's not theoretical, it's personal. It's about our lives and the lives of the people that we love. And this year, amidst all of the excitement about going back to school, there are gonna be kids in Vermont who go to school hungry and go to school without the supplies that they need. There will be parents who are worried more about coming home to an eviction notice then they have time to worry about how their kid is doing in school, because we're all just trying to get by the best we can. And I enter public service for those kids and those families. I will never, ever, as long as I live, accept injustice and accept this unconscionable wealth gap that we have in this country. Right? 